Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. The New Warehouse Podcast, hosted by Kevin Lawton, is your source for insights and ideas from the distribution, transportation, and logistics industry. A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. Hey, it's Kevin Lawton with the New Warehouse Podcast here at Modex 2020, day four in Atlanta. We're at the New Warehouse Podcast booth, and I am joined by Eric Hassan. He is the Director of Business Development over at the Caster Connection. So he's going to talk to us about, uh, you guessed it, casters, right? Casters are fun. All right. So we're going to talk about casters, but we're also going to talk about um, push-pull and the concept of that and kind of workers and how push-pull can affect them and how you can improve the push-pull scenario for your workers. Um, So I think it's going to be really interesting from uh, kind of a safety ergonomic perspective as well. So, Eric, welcome to the show. How are you? Oh, not too bad. A little tired, but... Yeah, we're pushing yeah. on through, right? Yeah, last day, afternoon, we're almost there, right? So. Almost home. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about uh, Caster Connection and what it is you guys do. So Caster Connection is a manufacturer of casters and wheels. Mm-hmm. Um, we are a 33-year-old, 100% women-owned business. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, so uh, we manufacture and we also distribute, so we kind of play Tetris with casters to provide mm. you the best solution for the application. Every card's different. Right. Whether you want to reduce noise or ergonomics, push pull. Mm-hmm. So, kind of just, you know, kind of create a puzzle. Right. Interesting. So, yeah. you're kind of looking for that, uh, the perfect caster hole to fit the right caster in, right? Pretty much. All right. All right. Cool. So, so you know, with casters, you know, obviously, you know, maybe some listeners are saying, uh, casters, you know, what could you talk about with casters? They're just wheels, right? So, but uh, <laughs> I could talk for hours. <laughs> I'm sure you could. So. You wouldn't want to listen, but I could talk for hours. <laughs> So, you know, one of the things about casters is that, you know, it helps you to do your job more efficiently, helps you to move things easier. And choosing the right one, I mean, is really important because it helps you to move whatever that object or whatever that cart, like you mentioned, uh, with the right purpose. You know, instead of, uh, you know, having difficulty, you don't want something that's hard to push or hard to pull. So, you know, we wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, there's a new study, right, that came from Ohio State University Spine Research Institute on uh, push-pull. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that study and what kind of the results were and how kind of, uh, I guess, casters can help you with that. Sure. <clears throat> so there's a, a current ISO standard for right. ergonomic push-pull that um, a lot of companies adhere to. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're currently, I think, uh, adding to it to kind of update a little bit. Right. Uh, you have uh, the, the Snook tables and Liberty Mutual tables mm-hmm. that came out about 25 years ago that people adhere to. But, you know, we kind of want to be on the forefront and when it comes to ergonomic push-pull. Right. And when people grab a cart or you grab a shopping cart mm-hmm. and you used to work in the distribution business. Right. How we test from the ISO standard is a one-point single gauge, right? Hmm. And you use two hands to grab the gauge and push it on a center point. Okay. But when you have carts in a distribution center or right. on the factory floor, you could be grabbing vertically, horizontally, and there are different height distances. So hmm. the, the, the part of the OSU study was if we're testing with a single gauge, is mm-hmm. it truly accurate versus using, you know, a dual gauge transducer or how you actually push right. a cart at work? Interesting. So what they found was the correlation, you know, the delta between the two, you know, is less than a percentage. Mm-hmm. So they're very, in assessing that risk and mm-hmm. how well it does it is great, whether you do it on a single point or you're using a two-hand, you know, transducer right. to reflect how you really push. Mm-hmm. And then it's also, it also looked at, from an ISO standard, you have to cover a certain amount of distance mm-hmm. in a certain amount of time. Hmm. So when you go to push something, you know, right. you normally don't do it very slow. You have things to do. People yeah. on the floor have to produce cars or mm-hmm. trucks or washing machines in a, in a certain tack time. Mm-hmm. So when they go to grab it, 
they're going to push. They accelerate right. differently. So they looked at different accelerations. Mm. So like when we're you know on the floor trying to help lower ergonomic push pull, we want to actually really help assess the true risk that you have if you're really trying to push right. 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 pounds, whatever it is. Right, interesting. So, so I mean, it's really kind of, uh, it's looking at a different uh, way of pushing and pulling than, because we're kind of adjusting the way that we're doing things with different types of carts and things. So, and people, you know, can, uh, one person can grab one card a different way than the next person, right? So, so I mean, the study really is interesting. And so, what I mean, what kind of like were the I guess the findings of the study, and how how does the caster world I guess uh, react to those findings? <coughs> so, um, the the outcome was really more along the lines of we we need to really have further study, right? Okay, because we just studied pushing it straight. Mm didn't even look at what turning is. Oh, right. So, like, when you're trying to turn a cart, mm -hmm. you know, specifically because it's, it's the Spine Research Institute, like, yeah. they're really looking at, because the number one injury in the workplace in manufacturing is the lower back push-pull strain. Oh, yeah. So 25% of all work, workman's comp claims mm -hmm. are lower back strain, and that averages anywhere from sixty-two to $81,000 in direct costs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we need to, like, really, the next portion of the study will be, you know, when you have to turn that, what right. does that really do? Because mm. from a, a caster standpoint, the ISO standard, you need to turn the mm -hmm. caster's perpendicular. That's the worst starting case scenario. Right. So if you're tugging it up to an assembly line, you have to push it in. So they're mm. always perpendicular. So that's the worst case starting point. Okay. So the current ISO standard, you do 10 pushes, 5 north, and 5 back south. Because mm. warehouse floors, they're all cut individually. There's flex in the car. There's compression on the, on the caster tread. So. Right you get different values. So you take the average of those 10 values to get a, a proper assessment of what the push-pull is at a specific weight with the certain casters that you have on it. Hmm. <clears throat> so we just did it straight, and we need to really look at the, the turning yeah. as well. Yeah, because then you add, like, like you're doing right now, you're adding that twist in there too, yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of different things that we need to continue to look yeah. at, but the, the OSU study that we just finished, it's more of looking at the acceleration and helping your customer, your client, mm -hmm. understand what you're truly having your your associates do on the floor. Right. If you really want them to push around mm -hmm. 3,000 pounds, you know, basically a you know, Honda Civic, yeah. <laughs> safely, whether it's a 90-pound woman or mm -hmm. a 300-pound gentleman, it needs to be the same risk for each individual. Mm -hmm. And helping them truly assess it, and from a caster standpoint, you know, you look at the swivel raceway, the bearing of the wheel, the hardness of the tread, mm -hmm. the length of the swivel lead. There's a lot of things that can be done with casters, but we need to also help them understand, like, you're trying to push around mm -hmm. a ton and a half, two tons. Yeah. Can you reduce the weight? And if you can't, you know, what else can we do to mm -hmm. make it the most safe to be for you to be pushing that stuff around? Definitely, definitely. So, so now... You know, you mentioned that, uh, you know, the high number of workers' comp claims that are lower back uh, strain, right? So, so now, why, why is it that workers are injuring themselves when it comes to the whole push-pull scenario? What, is it something that they're doing incorrectly, or is it a combination of things, or is it possibly, you know, the wrong uh, wheel on the whatever it is that they're moving? It's a, com it's a combination of things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's the, even the mental aspect. You know, the OSU study brings up the psycho portion of it like right i can do it yeah i can hit that golf ball 400 yards i can oh yeah so it's the same sort of thing <laughs> when pushing a car yeah you know that's the kind of like for lack of better term that ego portion of it i can do it yeah i can do it yeah but you're not realizing what you're slowly doing to your your mm. lower back over time you get yeah. micro tears in your spine mm. and then all it takes is that one time right you know because when the, the lower back push pull strain comes along you get that peak for when you have to get it started mm. and all it takes is one time for someone to get really hurt right and possibly you know disabled for the rest of their life just by pushing around a cart mm. <clears throat> so it could be the weight it could be the casters it could be where the handle is it could be that i'm just tired from the night before and I'm, i have to push this thing around like yeah. there's so many variables was the floor slippery mm. you know there's, there's a lot of different variables to look at so like we like to come on site assess mm. what you're really doing we're going to look at it a different, a different way, right? Right. You go in your house every day, you kind of become oblivious to what actually goes on. Yeah, you're just so if there's, complacent to it, yeah. If there's something really wrong, mm -hmm. a new set of eyes, we believe, to help come on site, mm -hmm. assess it, 
truly diagnose it. Right. Because if you know you manually tug something, power tug it, yeah. you know, with a tugger or AGV, whatever, or you just hand push it, those are two completely different animals when it comes to, especially the casters. Definitely. You can't tow a hard wheel because of the safety concerns and sliding. Mm -hmm. So when you start getting really heavy weights and you have to power tug them, a lot of a different variable speed and duty cycle and inside and outside, a lot of different things that you really need to look at from a caster. Mm. Like you want to, casters always talked about when there's a problem, right? Right. We like to be on the, the proactive yeah, side. Yeah, we want to we prevent the problem, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's what we prefer to do, but, you know, mm. everybody's busy and we're just trying to help out, get as much info out as we possibly can. And, right. Interesting. So now, so we talked about the assessment. So, so what does the assessment actually look like? What do you, what do you guys go in, and what are you looking at, and what's, what's actually assessed, and then what kind of, you know, can a, what can a company expect from to come out of that assessment in terms of like a report or analysis? So, what we normally do is bring a, an eighty-pound caster case with us. Okay. And we'll either walk the floor to look at what you have going on applicationally. Mm -hmm. Or we'll do what we do, basically a quick caster college. It takes about 30, 40 minutes. Right. And we go through what a caster is, mm. <clears throat> caster is, what it does, what it can't do. Mm. And specifically, you know, what they may be seeing on the floor to kind of get their wheel spinning a little bit. Okay. So once we go out there, we may be there for one cart. Mm. <clears throat> and then it may spin into, you know what, let me have you look at something else and then right. something else. So our, our goal is to always lower the push-pull. Anywhere from 30 to 50%. Mm -hmm. We'll do our best, but that's usually the goal. Right. Interesting. Okay. <coughs> so now, once you do the assessment, now what can, I mean, what can facilities like, you know, do right now, even before like an assessment, just to try and ensure that they're kind of uh, improving the push pull and then, you know, do as many steps as they can and then obviously bring you guys in as well. Um, you know, what kind of steps can they take and what kind of things are you? What are some of like the most common things that you guys are coming in and changing? It's usually when <clears throat> the, one of the associates has an issue. Right. Hopefully that the, they haven't had an injury. Right. Mm -hmm. It's usually noise related, or something's really hard to push. Mm. That's usually the buzzwords. Right. <clears throat> Fill out a, a form online, mm -hmm. and then we kind of just assess as much as we can. We ask a lot of questions. We have a two-page yeah. form that we technically have to fill out. Okay. Load overall height, the bolt hole spacing, all that sort of stuff to kind of just get a pretty good gauge on how to solve their specific problem before we mm. even get there. We may even send a set of sample casters because mm. we're extremely biased, right? We think ours are the greatest, yeah. but until they prove themselves on the manufacturing yeah. floor in their facility, mm -hmm. so that kind of helps too. So they can test them, kind of do a Pepsi challenge sort of thing. Okay. So we like, tend to line up the cards and do the push pull <clears throat> on what you currently have right. and what we recommend and what mm. the difference is. Interesting. The empirical data doesn't lie, right? So yeah. <coughs> casters aren't the cheapest, especially when it comes to ergo. Mm -hmm. So to get approval from your boss on the floor, mm -hmm. hey, I reduced the push pull, you know, 46% mm -hmm. versus what we currently have. Yeah. And to eliminate one push pull injury, which can be up to $80,000 or more, mm -hmm. the cost of a caster is nil at that point. Right. The way we look at it. Definitely, so. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's really important because you want to, you don't want to put kind of, I guess, cost savings before the actual like well-being of your employees and um, the safety of your employees, and then, and like you said, even you know, if you're not taking care of your employees and they end up getting injured down the road, then you know it's going to cost more probably than it would cost just to just to make a simple change, right? Yeah, to put the, an ROI to it, <clears throat> especially if they're you know spending a lot on casters just mm -hmm. during the year. Yeah to provide the solution they need just from a pure, you know, total cost of ownership standpoint. Like we can show that as well yeah. and lower ergo, you know, hope we, we assume it's a win-win. Yeah. But to be able to put an ROI for the end user just so they can can look at that and truly truly assess if it, if it was the right thing for them to do mm -hmm. really helps as well. All right. So thank you very much uh, for stopping by the booth. And now how can people find more information about uh, Caster Connection? www.casterconnection.com. There's a huge section on caster education that kind of spitballs what we just talked about. Mm -hmm. And then there's a, a customer inquiry form online right. as well. Okay. All right, uh, Eric, thank you so much for stopping by. And we'll post more information about the Caster Connection on the newwarehouse.com as well. Um, so we're wrapping up the show <laughs> here. So have a great rest of the show and you then too, have Kevin. a Thanks safe travel me. home as well. I appreciate it. Thanks, All Kevin. Right. Thank you. 
You've been listening to the New Warehouse Podcast with Kevin Lawton. Subscribe and check us out online at thenewwarehouse.com. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want more content from the new warehouse, check out our new video series called All Hands on LinkedIn. Just search for the new warehouse on LinkedIn and follow along.